Hey, I am back. Uh, you know, we finally uh, got in all the parts we needed uh, to finish putting this thing back together. Uh, you know, when I was first looking at it, uh, you know, kind of realized that, like, man, that old plastic screen is really beat up. Uh, so we've got a nice new tempered glass uh, screen to put on the front there. Uh, we're going to get uh, our uh, game gear put back together and check it out. So, uh, yeah, going to jump right in. Okay, so we've got our uh, game gear and power board. We can set that aside. That is all working now, and uh, so we're going to be concerned with uh, the main shell here, uh, the front of it. So we're going to actually just remove all of our silicone pads first and set them aside. And uh, then we're going to pop out our buttons. All right, there we go. So uh, as you can see, this screen is in pretty rough shape. So uh, we are going to replace that with a fresh one. And, uh, you know, I've done this before, if I remember right, you just had to apply a little bit of pressure from the back side, and you can see that it will start to lift off, just like that. There we go. That's how you get that old uh, plastic beater off there. All right, and looks like we do have a little bit of residue left, so um, I think I'm going to just try to peel most of that with my fingernail. Let's see if I can just sort of get it off there that way. And uh, then we will clean all this up with some uh, rubbing alcohol to get all that dirt and an ancient crud out from under there um, that it won't uh, interfere with our new screen when we put it on there. And uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward to clean this up. Just going to kind of use my fingernail and a little bit of rubbing alcohol. So I'm going to do that off camera and uh, be right back. Okay, so I just used a uh, cotton ball with some alcohol to clean that up uh, after kind of scraping off, uh, you know, what was left of the adhesive. So that should give us a nice clean surface um, to install our new screen onto. Uh, so yeah, I just need to get this out of uh, out of the plastic here, and uh, we will get it installed. Okay, and I uh, peeled the the back of this uh, plastic off. Unfortunately, I got a little bit of the front, uh, but that's okay. We'll just leave that on there so that way it's nice and protected uh, for when I give it back. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just fold that forward a little bit uh, and pull this tab to uh, get the uh, backing off. And then I'm gonna use my tweezers to uh, get at this bit of backing right here. And I usually like to kind of set this in the bottom first. Usually try to kind of hit that bottom edge. We go. And that is now a nice new scratch free clear uh, screen uh, for, for Jay's game gear here. Very cool. Yeah, now we're just going to go ahead and get it put all back together. All right, so from here, just kind of reversing uh, what we did before. silicone pads back in. Um, the nice thing about these buttons is they actually have little tabs that will help you get them put back in properly. There we go. Put our silicone pads back. Just like that and our board is now ready to set back down for this i usually kind of uh take the um 
volume knob there, the volume wheel. Sort of slide that into place first. And then drop everything right back down in there, just like that. All right, now we just need to screw this board back in. That's right, I need my small screwdrivers for this. And remember screwing left first until we feel the click. And then screwing our board into place. I like to kind of go opposite uh, sides, corner to corner. There we go. And uh, you know our power board uh, wiring that we did there seems like that is going to fit in there just fine. That looks good. There's no problem sort of coming up from that opposite side there, which is good. Yeah, there we have our this side of our shell complete. So I'm actually going to set that aside for now. And the next thing we need to do is actually get our uh, rechargeable batteries installed. So I'm going to go grab those and we'll start getting those put in the shell. Okay, I grab my battery packs and have the uh, back of the shell here. And uh, we actually need to remove uh, these wires here. Um, and you can see that uh, there's a little bit of so solder on there if you uh, sort of pull these covers back. And uh, they're usually not too bad. You just kind of hit them with your fingernail. Pull them back. That. one's being kind of stubborn. And, uh, you know, in this case, I'm not super worried about it because we're not going to, we're going to be removing these entirely. Um, but yeah, we just need to heat those up with some solder and pull the wires. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my iron up to temperature, turn on my fume extractor here. And so just going to grab the wire, heat the tab up, this, and remove. Pretty straightforward. Go. All right, and that is all there is to removing these wires. Pretty easy to do. Uh, now, these tabs, once you do that, you're just going to bend up like this. Because we're going to be sliding them through holes there to the other side. And once you do that, you can just kind of push from the back. And that'll let you start... Uh, Start getting these free. Now uh, you may find that some uh, some pliers help once you've got them 
through a little bit. There we go. There's one. It's kind of stubborn, but it came through. Top one just pushed right out. I don't remember if there's a particular trick to getting this other part out. I'm just going to try to kind of bend it, get my pliers behind it. There we go. Like that. And then same thing on this side. Yeah, so really what the problem is there is there's just a big blob of solder. It's kind of making it hard to push through. Try flattening it out a little bit. There we go. All right, there we go. Got all of our tabs out. Uh, last time I replaced one of these, uh, these tabs were all so, so corroded I had to pull them all anyway. These ones are actually in pretty decent shape, but we just don't need them anymore because we need room for our battery packs, which we have right here. So we've got two, and you can see that there are different lengths of wire here. So I have a feeling that we're going to be short side here. And then our long one over here because it has a longer run over to our power board, which is going to be placed in right here. I think really the question here is, is how, how we go about getting our, our small connector uh, through to the other side here. None of the holes are quite big enough to accommodate that, so I'm probably going to have to cut something out, which is really no big deal. I just would like to find kind of the best place to do it. So I'm going to go uh, check my instructions just to make sure. Looks on this side, it should be easy. You can just pop right up through where that original cover was. Uh, we just don't have any particularly good holes over here on this side. Um, but on our short side here, be able to just push it in there just like that. Actually, by the look of it, it it is pretty tight. I may have to make some some small adjustments to the shell to get it to fit. Maybe not. I'm trying to play with it a little bit here and see if it'll fit. Close, but I have a feeling I'm going to have to get rid of these tabs right here. So I'm going to go check and be right back. All right, so near as I can tell, the best thing to do is going to be to uh, remove this tab right here. And uh, that will let us sort of feed things, feed things through. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to grab this and just kind of bend it until that plastic decides to give. Actually, you know what? I may not even have to actually completely snap it off. I think I can probably just feed that down through. That. Go.
All right, so now the trick, I think, is really just going to be getting this to uh, sit inside that space there. Right, so you can kind of really just sort of press fit piece in there, just like that. There we go. And then we're going to run this in the bottom here. Eventually, that's going to connect up to our power board. Uh, so, yeah, now we just need to do the same thing, uh, but over here on this side. There we go. And again, that just kind of press fits in there. I haven't done one of these before, so it's kind of interesting to see how they fit. Uh, but that's pretty great. I'm just going to go ahead and put the battery covers back on. That way everything is nice and secure. All right, there we go. So now we have our rechargeable batteries installed and ready to hook up to our power board. Okay, and I'm just going to clean my mat off a little bit. There we go. I like a clean work surface. All right, so set our board here. And power board basically going to sit in here pretty straightforward uh, now before I screw this into place though I've got a spacer that came with the kit uh, that needs to go around our USB-C port Hundred percent sure how that. Works. Yeah, you know that's that's interesting. I've not put one of these in yet. Kind of looks like it should go just like that. No, that can't be right. That's sticking out way too far. No, I think I see. There's a seems like this piece should actually slide right down there's like these two metal tabs on our USB-C port seems like that should slide right in between them it's barely too wide so we'll check the other one Yeah, I'm going to go and check uh, my instructions on that spacer uh, just because, you know, that is so close. It really does feel like it should be able to slide right in there, but it's just barely too wide. I want to go check on that. It might just be a tolerance thing with the 3D print, or I might be missing something entirely. So I'll be right back. Okay, so you really just have to press the thing firmly. 
it does go in between those two uh, metal brackets there. It's just very snug, which is good. It's actually what you want, so that way it will uh, stay in place properly. All right, so let's go ahead and set that down in there and see how it's going to fit. Okay, that looks looks perfect. Let's go ahead and secure that in place now. All right, there's one screw. And here's the last one. Okay, now that we are all secure, we've got our spacer in there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and hook up our power. Okay, there's one side. And there's the other. Oh, looking pretty good. We even have our old spacer. I guess that's not going to quite fit there anymore. Um, that's okay. It's not actually necessary. Um, all right, so really the last bit of this is just going to be to hook our uh, finish hooking everything back up. Hook our uh, sound back up over here. All right, we're hooked up there. Sound should be good. Now, really, I just need to figure out how best to route my, my power here. So I want to keep as much um, strain off of the pins as, as possible. So I think what I'm actually going to do is kind of try to separate these wires just a little bit more from each other. Here we go. Just trying to get a little bit more of a space here for each one. That way I can sort of lay them down in between each of these pins. And then I can sort of flatten this ribbon out like that. And then that should let me get it all closed back up exactly the way it needs to go. Actually, I think I'm going to try to kind of hook this over. Well, I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want to do this here. Let's see. I'll try bringing the top over. Oh, I don't like that, so keep about doing it this way.
Oh, shoot. Looks like my metal tab right here got bent. That was actually kind of preventing it from closing back up. Yeah, I think that's exactly, exactly what we need. Now, before I go screwing this all together, I am going to do a quick power test. Sure. Let's, uh, let's see what this game is. Hmm. That doesn't look good. Yeah, something screwy. I also got the power switch in there backwards, so. You know, buttoning these up is always, not always, but can be kind of tricky, so. Um, all right, I actually need to lift that board back out, so I'm going to go get this uh, power switch installed the right way around, be right back. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to show actually is the soundboard. Um, these are pretty notoriously difficult to get apart. Um, as you can see, I've already pulled the caps. Um, the way I usually go about doing this is to keep one side and then lift the cap and then pull it. I accidentally just forgot to hit record uh, on this portion of it. But uh, um, the main thing that I find helpful is to start here and then work my way around because this cap is really difficult to get at and you can totally hit uh, this connector here and uh, and really mess it up with your uh, iron um, if you try to come at it from the left side so I find that removing everything starting here coming in a counterclockwise fashion and then stopping with this one here and just coming at it from the right side until you can get to the left is, is kind of the trick uh, to getting into that one uh, but yeah let's go ahead and uh, replace all of our caps uh, on the audio board now and we're actually going to start there and work our way backwards. Yeah, the audio board is is a little tricky. Not terrible, you know, it's not, not super difficult to do or anything. Um, it's just a matter of uh, being patient and uh, moving through uh, kind of methodically. Uh, now, the way that I like to prepare my SMD caps um, to put on the board is I hit them with a little bit of flux and put just a, a small amount of solder uh, right directly onto the pins. Too much there. It's all right. I'm just going to sweep my iron back over that. Like that. Then hit the other side. There we go. All right, and I've swept the uh, excess, the uh, extra solder away, so it's still nice and smooth and flat but it does have solder on there now all right and uh, our negative side is going to be facing away from our connector And I'm going to try to give myself uh, as much room as I possibly can uh, for that side over there. Um, and chances are I'm still going to burn it a little bit with the iron. Um, I'm going to do my best not to. Put a little bit of solder on the bottom side of my iron. Here. Just like that. Okay, and it looks like what I managed to do was mostly 
put some uh, solder on this side of this uh, small SMD cap over there, which is not what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to come at this from uh, from the other side here a little bit. Here we go. That side is done. And uh, and I tried to give myself as much room as I possibly can. You can see it's it's a very tight fit uh, in between that connector and uh, that leg of the SMD cap. So I'm going to try to sneak in there uh, without causing any damage. And I really wet my iron really good here. Hit it with some flux. See if I can't get in there without hitting anything. Well, I hit the uh, the connector just a little bit, not too bad. Just kind of scorched the outside of it a little bit, uh, and managed to make the weld without causing too much damage. So it it'll still be you know plenty easy to plug into. But yeah, that is really tricky getting in there. Um, that's probably the hardest part of a, a Genesis recap, at least on the audio board. And, uh, and a lot of times these days, um, I find it easiest just to replace the whole audio board. But it's important to be able to do that too. So, All right, so we got one of these uh, 100 mic 16-volt uh, caps in. Now we're going to need to do one of these smaller ones. I'm going to come up here. Yeah, you know, SMD caps are, they're, they're definitely not as easy to work with uh, as through-hole caps, but they're not, you know, it's not terrible or anything. You just have to just be methodical about it. Understand that they're, you know, they're going to give you a little bit of trouble, but just stay the course. Don't get frustrated. All right, there we go. Cap is prepared. All right, so this one, the uh, negative side, is going to be facing the uh, headphone jack. Just like that. Okay, not just like that. That one's kind of rotated, but you get the idea. It's going to be right in there. Oops. Iron good and ready. And our first side is tacked. We're going to come in and hit the other one. All right, that's welded, but I'm not super happy with that. So I'm going to hit it with a little more flux. Try to get that solder to go where it's supposed to. Just like that. So far, all of our welds on the audio board are looking good. All right, prepare our next cap.
again, just do like a quick sweep to get those legs prepared. And this one, audio is going to be facing this, or I'm sorry, the negative side is going to be facing this way. Just like that. Ahead and tin my iron. Hold that right where I want it. Did not quite do it, did it? Try that again. on there but it's a little twisted try to adjust it just a little bit better all right there we go now we're gonna hit this side all right that looks really good not super thrilled with the back side of this we're gonna that one more time. Perfect. Beautiful. Oop. Got to drop my soldering iron right on my computer there. That's no good. I think I managed not to melt anything too much. Okay. All right, last of our big, big caps here. And you can see I'm just doing a quick Real quick sweep, just all right, and then this time negative is facing in towards the door here. I'm gonna try to give it as much room as I can. kind of have that piece right where I want it, so I get that in now. All right, looks good. Let's go ahead and the other side here. I don't like the way that looks, so we're going to hit it one more time. It's another one that's kind of tricky to get at. That's why using lots of flux is very helpful. Okay, last last cap for our audio. All right, negative is facing that way. Get our flux on there, get our iron ready, and get it installed. Last one.
All right, there we go. That is our audio board fully recapped and ready to go back in the system. Okay, let's get our audio board put back in. Just slide it in like that. Okay, there's our audio board, good to go. Now we need to uh, replace our screen. Our shield, I should say. Goes on there just like that. Home stretch now. I think Game Gear is a really cool system. Um, I think it doesn't quite get the uh, the attention it deserves. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe it doesn't deserve a ton of detention, or excuse me, attention. Um, there weren't like a ton of like, you know, earth shattering, ground breaking games for it, but it was just a solid, uh, gaming system in the early nineties. You know, I, I had one, uh, and I liked it a lot. Um, and you know, it was kind of the place where I played a lot of, uh, solid kind of third party games. You know, I had like both of the NBA jam games for it and, uh, more combat 2 on there uh you know but it did play some you know i mean let's gotta say like the first party games are pretty cool too I had a couple of sonic games you know sonic and chaos and so there really was some some solid stuff uh but yeah we are we're ready to button this thing back up so let's go ahead and do that now okay so we have our shell closed up here it's kind of folded it in from the top and uh we're gonna go ahead and uh put our six main screws back in And actually, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, uh, we'll do our test uh, to see if it works. We don't want to have to put, you know, six screws in, turn it on, realize it doesn't work, uh, and then have to uh, undo all of them. So let's go ahead and plug in here. All right, there's our power. Uh, and it's kind of cool that uh, this um, spacer is clear so you can actually see the little charge light inside so you can tell when the batteries are charging but yeah let's toss a game in and see if it works fingers crossed right moment of truth let's see what happens hey yeah all right hey it booted for us got audio Excellent. You know, for just the default default amp and speaker, it actually gets kind of loud. So this is just the original screen, so you know it's not going to look super great here. There we go. That's a pretty good angle. But you can get the idea, you know. Um, 
original screen, but new glass, so, you know, be able to see it uh, as well as you'll ever be able to see it with that screen. And that is a fully revived, fully revived game gear back from the dead. I am so happy about that. Okay, that wraps it up for our uh, Sega Game Gear uh, video. Um, this one was was a lot of fun for me. You know, I had not uh, gotten to work on uh, a Game Gear in quite a while, and so getting to bring one back from the dead um, feels good. You know, it, it it's always. Uh, Always feels good to, to make to know that you're keeping something out of the landfill, you know. Uh, and in this case, you know, this has many more years good use uh, now. So uh, anyway, that was a lot of fun. Um, it was a head scratcher too, you know. There was some some real prob problem solving that went into this one. Uh, you know, word of the wise: keep an eye on your power, uh, you know, connector from your your main board um, to the uh, screen board. That just uh, that one gave me some problems, but managed to figure it out. And uh, yeah, I just had a fun time doing this one. So anyway, uh, if you enjoyed your time hanging out with me tonight, I I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe and all that stuff. You know, uh, just would uh, j just means a lot to me. Uh, you know, it's it's always cool to see uh, more subscribers come on. And I always, you know, really think that means most to me is, is hearing from me in the comments. You know, I, I, I really um, I get a kick out of that. I get a kick out of talking with you, whether it's about, you know, the particular project that I'm working on in the video or just retro gaming stuff in general. Uh, you know, I like that a lot. Uh, I did recently start a, um, a buy me a coffee thing and a, uh, and a Patreon page. If you'd like to uh, help support the channel, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, I am looking forward to uh, getting the last thing knocked out uh, for Jay. And that would be uh, getting uh, an RGB amp put in his, um, in his uh, Turbo Duo, or excuse me, his PC Engine uh, Duo R. Uh, I think that is going to be a really cool one, a good cap to uh, the projects that he's uh, brought over uh, to me to, to work on for me. So uh, anyway, thanks for hanging out with me, and we will catch you next time.